Hello and welcome to another update video about Q&T. Bitcoin fairly friendly today, rather neutral, a little bit of upside in a corrective rally, but it seems like that Q&T is anticipating the next Bitcoin drop and it's already, yeah, it's already coming down before actually Bitcoin is starting to sell off. We will see. I mean, Bitcoin's chart should be taken on its own, Q&T's chart as well. But what I highlighted in the last video seems to be playing out further. Um, we had a bit of a rally here over the last, well, it was end of last week, wasn't it? When was that rally? It was on Saturday, Sunday. Um, so Q&T here with basically outperforming in the very short term some other coins. However, as I explained to you, um, we don't have a stable bottoming structure. So it will be very difficult for Q&T from here to rally and to break out. I mean, anything is possible. We can always only focus on what's probable. And we need to understand that without any clear bottoming structure, we don't really have a valid Elliott wave setup for higher prices, which doesn't mean it couldn't go up further. It truly can, but there's just simply no probable setup here. And therefore we continued to focus on our own wave count in which we said that the rally was only a likely corrective three wave structure in an ABC structure. You can actually see that. Let me just add the sub waves to the chart um, here. A wave to the upside, in wave B, B wave to the downside, in wave B and the C wave of wave B. Um, it also reached, I think, the one to one ratio. So basically, basically a textbook corrective structure. Let's just double check that. Um, now I need to start measuring from here, then the A wave up, B wave down. Yeah, reached the one to one ratio perfectly. Couldn't be better and got rejected and it's coming down in a fairly impulsive fashion. Now, we cannot really recognize these sub waves very well here. So I can't really tell you it is an actual impulse, but it has certainly impulsive characteristics. It looks impulsive. It comes down very aggressively. But we know how Q how stubborn Q&T has been over the recent days, weeks and months. It just doesn't want to break through our green support area here. This is simply a structural support area. Do not mistake this for one of our setups or trend reversal areas. I mean, you could argue it is a trend reversal area, yes. And we did expect various bounces from here. But essentially, what this is just visualizing is relevant bullish support um, down here between 95 and yeah, 100, 102 dollars. And up here around 120, we've got relevant resistance. So price is just moving here in a range. And so far, um, as I said, you know, as long as we are between 95 and 120 dollars, it is quite a lot of volatility, but it is not really changing anything. Yeah, there's no game changer here and, you know, it can do anything. So, you know, um, it can do anything really without changing anything. And, you know, I, I don't know how to formulate it, but it's basically a waiting room. OK, so whatever happens in here, if it's at 95 or 120, doesn't change our wave count at all. It would just be seen as corrective structure. And really only if we have a breakout, we have a good understanding of how Q&T's price will move in the coming weeks or months even. Without a break above 120, we cannot call this correction complete. Um, and ideally, what I would prefer is a break below $95 first because we just don't have a very stable bottoming structure down there. And it will be very difficult for price to create an impulsive structure of the lows. OK, so I still see it as very likely that price is going to follow this yellow wave count here. Um, it's just that if you if you see that price hasn't really managed to get off the ground here, uh, despite very despite various uh, attempts, it just hints at a breakdown but um, we also know how difficult it has been for price to break through because it hasn't managed to do it it's just that probability wise if we take this entire correction which already started in october november last year then the last wave of the correction in which i assume we are would normally go below the first wave of the correction which ended here in november 22 at basically 95 dollars so that's why i'm waiting for another low I mean, I wouldn't necessarily be focused. I wouldn't be focused on that too much if we had or had we seen already some kind of impulsive attempts to the upside. But there are simply no impulsive attempts. So as soon as I see a five wave move up followed by a three wave move down, I'm going to track a one two setup and a potential breakout.
But until then, I remained focused on the downside and highlighted many times before that for anybody who wants to trade this, I guess range trading or even a grid bot might be the way to go at the moment. Okay, that's my update about q and I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.